During the mid-16th century, the Netherlands was the center for financial innovation, and the Dutch's financial markets were way ahead of its time compared to other European powers. The Dutch had a central bank, the Bank of Amsterdam, a sound system of public finance and debt, and corporations, such as the infamous Dutch East Indian Company. The Dutch was also one of the first countries to wield the strength of globalization, with its first-rate navy and maritime technological superiority. The Dutch became a trading superpower in herring, salt, wine, and textiles. This translated to a burgeoning middle class and wealthy elites, who like our modern contemporaries found ways to display their newfound wealth and status. Today we might wear Rolexes and drive BMWs to let our peers know how well we are doing, but in 16th century Netherlands, it was all about tulip bulbs. The tulip came from Turkey, but slowly made its way through Western Europe, and by 1562, a cargo of tulip bulbs made its way from Constantinople to Antwerp. The tulip was admired for its beauty, and it quickly became a status symbol to possess and to put on display by the growing middle and upper classes. Due to the growing demand for the tulip, Western European countries such as Belgium, Holland, and Germany began growing the tulip bulb to meet demand. Due to the enormous prestige attached to tulips, especially bulbs that possess striking mutations, tulip bulb prices rose dramatically, and by 1634, many non-professionals into the tulip bulb speculation game, hoping to benefit from the boom in tulip bulb prices. A single tulip bulb could be worth a new carriage, two gray horses, and a complete harness. Tulip fever was gripping Netherlands, and the tulip bulb could be seen trading in taverns across the country. The Dutch didn't simply trade tulip bulbs in the traditional sense. Rather, they traded tulip bulbs in a primitive futures market, meaning that for a small fee of 1 20th of a guilder per contract, buyers can secure the delivery of tulip bulbs for a set date in the future at a price set in the present. Future contracts are beneficial to buyers who can secure a shipment of goods today for delivery in the future at a price known today. Sellers benefit from being able to lock in prices for their goods today rather than face the uncertainty of prices in the future for their goods, which would help sellers better budget and plan for the future. Future markets still exist today for such goods as grains, orange juice, oil, and even financial instruments. However, the future markets for tulip bulbs in the Netherlands at the time was primitive without legal enforcement or margin requirements. By 1636, speculation in the tulip bulb market hit a feverish pitch which emboldened Netherlands citizens from all walks of life. Farmers, noblemen, mechanics, seamen, and even maid servants to get into the tulip bulb game. These non-sophisticated tulip bulb investors put their homes and lands up as collateral for investing in tulip bulbs. But by 1937, change was in the air, and for reasons that are unknown, there was a trickle of investors that cashed out of the tulip bulb game. Perhaps they were nervous at how high tulip bulb prices have reached, and consider a bird in the hand was worth two in the bush. For whatever reason, the trickle of sellers turned into a flood as tulip bulb investors got more nervous at the falling prices for tulip bulbs. A vicious cycle began to form. Selling led to lower prices, which led to more selling. Bulbs could not be sold for 10% of their peak value. Investors that bet their property and livelihoods in the tulip bulb market were instantly bankrupt. One author noted, Substantial merchants were reduced almost to beggary, and many a representative of noble lines saw their fortunes of their houses ruined beyond redemption. Peter M. Garber, professor of economics at Brown University, posits that there are contributing factors to the speculative atmosphere for tulip bulbs in 17th century Netherlands. During the height of tulip mania from 1635 to 1637, the bluponic plague was wreaking havoc in Netherlands, and one-sixth of the population of Amsterdam was lost in 1636. A Spanish invasion of Netherlands was seen as a possibility as the Franco-Spanish War erupted in 1635, so facing the prospect of bluponic plague and war, citizens were more willing to gamble given they had nothing to lose in the face of plague and war. Also, because primitive future markets for tulip bulbs were not legally enforceable, investors in losing futures bets simply walked away from their contracts, which gave them even more incentive to gamble. It should be mentioned that market data for tulip bulbs for this time period was spotty at best, and Peter M. Garber questions if there was in fact a bubble at all. With the collapse of tulip bulb prices in 1637, we never again see the humble tulip bulb grip a nation and whip it into a speculative feeding frenzy.